Reynolds episodes from 20 years ago. And the thing that amazes me is I'm watching them not for the second time, maybe the 10th time. And as I watch them, I say, oh, my God, that was in 2002? I remember watching it with my son. That was 13 years ago? I, I can't believe it. We, I watch, you know, you're like you're watching episodes. It's like reading a book again. You know, I used to be an avid reader more so of books than I am now. I'm an avid reader of news and an avid reader of the internet. I'm not an avid reader of books anymore. I write them. So how can I read the internet and, and read books and write books at the same time? It's almost impossible. And talk about iPhones. I haven't talked about that yet. What is this mania for a new iPhone? I have an older one, an i4, and a flip phone. People laugh when I pull out the flip phone. They say, you still have a, look at him, he's got a flip phone. I say, yeah, I do, and it gets better reception in elevators than an iPhone does, incidentally. This thing, it gets reception in, in, the, in the basement of a parking garage. This old Nokia, uh, <laughs> it's like a laughable iPhone. I do it sometimes to see how foolish people can be. Oh, look at the old man with the iPhone, with the, with the flip phone. <laughs> Superior, because they bought an i7. What in the world do they need it for? What in the world are they reading that's so important? Showing naked body parts to somebody? My God. So I'll stick with my i4 with a battery case built around it. I've dropped it many times and it doesn't break. And no, I'm not going to rush out to the mall to get one. I don't need it. I'm very reluctant to get rid of things that work. I'm a really weird guy. Like I bought a Mercedes new in a 2008, an S600, which I named Wilhelm in my first novel, Abuse of Power. Remember the the character has a, a big Mercedes, a big heavy car of each 12, and he named it Wilhelm. Well, it was based on my car, and I loved. I got to love the car. I attached the cars. First of all, I'm an antiquarian. I didn't get the calls yet. And I'm the type that grew up in an immigrant household where you didn't throw cars away. They bought them used, a two or three-year-old good car, and he kept them for five years or more, uh, and then bought another used car, you know. So I was always taught to, to preserve things. I was the kind of kid who lined up his shoes under his youth bed. <laughs> they even called it a youth bed. We all slept in one room. And I had my five pair of shoes, and I'd shine them up and put them under my bed. Could you imagine how, what, a, what a child psychologist would say about me today? Compulsive, OCD, kept his shoes neat, folded his pants on the edge of his bed. Definitely needs retraining. So I learned to, to preserve things that were mine and take care of them. I didn't, like, I didn't come from the throwaway time. So as I'm saying, um, it's like the iPhone. I don't want to get rid of it. Like the Nokia flip phone, I don't want to get rid of it. It was bad enough when I had to throw away the... It's not a Nokia, it's the other... It's a Samsung. I still have a Nokia that I bought before the Samsung in a drawer. Even though it's useless, I refuse to throw it out. Somehow it's like a friend of mine. I keep it in the bottom of an underwear drawer. <laughs> I won't throw away my old Nokia, let alone my Samsung flip phone, let alone my i4 iPhone. So now we get to the car. The car's an 08 Mercedes S600. Big blue, fast, monster. I love the car. I can do 4.20 to 60 and 4.2. This car is big and heavy, 5,000 pounds. Better than any sports car I've ever driven. But she's looking a little ragged around the tail and here and there. And there's no dents because I have, a, a, what do you call it, a ding neurosis in parking lots. I'm one of those guys that I'll park my car in the far end of a parking lot. I'm one of those guys who'll park outside of a parking lot. I'm one of those guys who look for the furthest spot in a parking lot. And as a result, my car which is seven years old, has not a ding on it. But the bumper's got a little ding and that, 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 that. And it's time for a new one, so I'm looking at a new one. But the thing is, I don't know what to do with the old one. I can't put it in the bottom of a drawer with my underwear, so I don't quite know what I'm going to do. <laughs> do one other piece of housekeeping. Did you see the story over the weekend of a bully at a high school in Southern California who punched, was beating up a blind boy? And a hero, a football player hero, came over and with one punch... Knocked the bully out, just bam. The bully went down, and when he went on the ground, you see his hands, he looks like a mouse with those claws. Like, oh, don't hit me. No, no, no. Guess what happened? Guess who was thrown out of school by the vermin who run the, the schools today? The hero. They threw him out of school and took him off the football team. Why? Take a guess who's running schools now. Well, there's 35,000 names on a petition to put the kid back on the football team. We've been trying to find them because I'm going to give him a scholarship, incidentally. And I want to get him on the show. I mean, this kid is a hero. This is America at its best. And now that we've completed the uh, uh, housekeeping chores of the Savage Nation in the third hour of the show, let's go to the callers. FTL, Tom, welcome from Fort Lauderdale. What's on your mind? Hello, Dr. Savage. Uh, two quick questions. 
Uh, it looks like Obama's doubling down against Putin and Russia. He looks like he's so enraged that he's been outflanked by Putin that it, it appears that the next few days uh, are, are the most dangerous because of his reaction. And yes, Putin, question, right. Obama is very dangerous right now because he's been upstaged by a better man. Right. That's right. He's, In plain English, that's a full sentence. Not only is he a better man, but he's Putin is, is a man who does not abandon his allies in a time of need, unlike President Obama, who has abandoned all of his allies in a time of need. Israel, Egypt, Jordan. He will not send them the weapons that they need to fight ISIS. This man has no loyalty whatsoever except to his own greed and his own ambitions. Hey, can I Thank ask you for the call. It, what? So, what was that? Please, please yeah, send it again. Could ask, if I could ask my second question. Uh, if it's possible, could we trade a couple of those talking heads like Ashley to ISIS for a chance to be in that room with Putin and Obama? Could you believe what I heard? I mean, I heard it in passing today. She called him Boris Yeltsin. Did you? Did anyone else hear that but me? Yeah, no. Sure. Nobody, nobody has the ears of the wolf. I have the nose of a wolf and the ears of a wolf. That's why I live alone. I'm hypersensitive. Stay on the line, my friend. You get a copy of Government Zero. We'll be going out to you in a week or so. Next caller on the Savage Nation, M-A-L. Renee, welcome from the nation's capital. Go ahead, Renee, what's on your mind? Hi, Dr. Savage. Um, I was just wondering, with all the acts of treason that Obama has um, made toward the country, do you think that there's something that he might be holding over the heads of members of Congress and our military leaders that he threatened them with, like with their families? No, I don't think so at all. I think that the power structure is set up so that he doesn't have to threaten them. He just uh, he removes them from their positions. Stalin would have his general shot, who he was afraid of. Obama has them smeared by the hacks who work for him, and then he has them thrown out of the military. That's how he's decapitated the command structure. As far as the media, there's not much to do because most of them were worthless to begin with, so I wouldn't say it's a conspiracy that they're worthless. They were worthless to begin with. The few people I know who went into me the media when everyone else went into a regular life were those who couldn't make it in anything else. They're not the smartest people on the planet. Most of the people in the media are fundamentally uh, actors. They're actors and actresses pretending to be serious people. And that makes them even, even more dangerous. Thank you. Oh, I didn't give her a book. I forgot. KSFO, Michelle, you're next up. What's on your mind? Hi, Dr. Savage. Um, I just wanted to say thank you um, for all your insight. Um, I've learned so much from you. I listen to you every day at lunchtime. Um, I'm in Marin County, so I know you're familiar with the area. <laughs> oh, yes, I certainly am. <laughs> um. You know, what's bothering me most recently is um, this whole drama with the Pope. Um, I grew up as a Catholic, and, you know, I'm 44 years old. I've been raised here in Nevada, and, you know, he never spoke up when I was a kid like that. So why why is he doing this now? Wait, wait, wait. Sorry, who never spoke up? A Pope? Yeah, like like this guy is. He never. They never Because spoke you have to understand, I've studied the Pope. The Pope has a long history of being a, po a political figure. He had a history of being in politics back in his Argentina when he was young, and he chose after entering a world of politics to enter the church. In other words, he saw the church as a better avenue to bring his worldview to bear upon uh, the flock, uh, the flocks around the world, and that's what he's done. He's a, a lifetime Peronista, and if you study Juan uh, Perón and Eva Perón, you'll see that they were, they were hardcore Stalinists and their economic system was completely flawed. And the Pope has brought uh, that viewpoint, unfortunately, to the forefront in his recent missives against the middle class and against the science itself. And I think that that's important for you, for you to uh, tell your friends about. So I'm going to send you Government Zero, and I hope you give it to, uh, well, at least, you know, give up the chapter on the Pope and his secret agenda and who he is so that they understand that this wasn't by chance. Stay on the line, Michelle. Oh they didn't pick him by chance. They didn't pick him by chance. Jim on WBAP in Dallas, Texas. Welcome to the Savage Nation. Oh, just great to talk to you, Dr. Savage. And I was wondering who you thought would be the best to take over the speakership of the House. And did you know... It doesn't have to be a congressperson. We can appoint someone. Will you be the one? <laughs> I oh, I know where you're going with that one. 
the audience. Yeah, well, well, what do you mean? How, do they elect them? How do they, how do they pick them? The House members, someone in the House appoints Michael Savage, and then they vote on it, and if the overriding vote. So let me ask you something. What do you think the chances are if you if you nominated me to be elected in that House of Representatives, like next to zero or zero? Uh, I'll tell you what. I, uh, I <laughs> let me, uh, can I say this? I don't want to be Speaker of the House because it would be going down the ladder of success. I'm the Speaker of the Nation. Uh, and I am very I'm very happy with my position as Speaker of the Nation. I don't want to be Speaker of the House. I'll leave that to men uh, at the level of John Boehner. You stay on the line because I'm sending your government <laughs> to zero. Now, that's not bad for on-the-cuff, off-the-cuff thinking, is it? you got to learn how to speak on your feet. If you want to, I'll stop right there. It rhymes with something, but it's a family show. Goodbye now. Be right back. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. My Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com, the only company I trust to protect my wealth with gold and silver. Call 800-B-U-Y-C-O-I-N. Too much. Okay, I'm not in the mood. It's the end of the show. I, I need a gamma globulin shot from this show. And uh, I'm not going to have a gamma globulin shot. I'm going to have a reality shot. I can't imagine what Obama and Putin are going to say to each other. Well, I can kind of imagine, but I know we're never going to know what happens. And I know that Obama has such a frail ego because deep down he knows that he's, uh, well, let us say, way over his head and never deserved the power that he has been granted. And he knows Putin is a better man. And for that reason, the world's a very unstable place. If only they could go out to a judo mat in a pair of boxer shorts and have it out there for the world to see. You know, it might be a safer world. But then again, we don't work in an uncivilized manner, do we? No, we're a much more civilized nation than that. We don't revert to that kind of stuff. Our enemies are just smeared here in America or ignored here in America. Their great works are ignored and they're made into be what they're not to be. No, that's how we do it in America. We're much more civilized than that. That's how the Jake Woodpeckers uh, function for the uh, for the new Reich. Now let's go to the callers, in, and we can't even go to the callers. I want all of you who uh, what callers we have from around the country here: Carly Fiorina and a Muslim run. She has a Muslim running mate, or he says, is she picked the Muslim running? Mate? I'm, I think she's overrated. I don't know people with the Carly Fiorina. The only, she's a product of the media who doesn't want Trump to win. So they made Carson is now as good as him because they know he's an easy pushover for Hillary. Hillary will, will destroy Carson because Carson's a genuinely nice man and a genuine man. Hillary is a vampire. So they want Hillary to debate, to debate Carson. So they made Trump down this other one now, Fiorina. She ran for the governorship here in California years ago. She was for open borders. She lost. She didn't get the conservative base. End the story. That's why they want her to run. Okay, any other questions? I got the answers, and tomorrow is another day. Will you please get a copy of Government Zero already?